uh, Gorana Kuka Epstein. I'm originally Serbian. That's where I was trained as a plastic surgeon. I moved to Miami um, five years ago and I still maintain my practice in Serbia. So I work with Dr. Epstein in Miami, but I also travel back to Serbia three times a year. Uh, since my background is plastic surgery, I was introduced to regenerative medicine at the very early years of my co uh, cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery residency. And I sort of always liked that idea that our body and our tissue could potentially help other tissues rather than taking medications. So I started applying fat grafting uh, into scars prior to hair transplants and I realized that those uh, grafted uh, scars uh, have better regrowth than non-grafted scars. And I thought that was a great idea because scar is uh, that dense hypertrophic tissue that I can soften with fat grafting. And that's when my journey of regenerative medicine in hair loss started. Uh, from there, I thought, okay, if fat works for the scars, let me see why and how it could work for androgenic alopecia. And I started exploring and reading and, and reading and I realized that when hair is lost, it's, all, it's also, there is a loss of adipose tissue in the scalp. And when we graft in hair transplant and we make recipient sites, usually it's very thin tissue. So I thought, okay, I can recreate that subcutaneous layer in scalp with fat grafting and I started applying uh, fat grafting into for androgenic alopecia and also fat graft fat uh, induces angiogenesis which means we have better vascularization of hair follicles also it does contain stem cells or regenerative cells so there is enrichment with cells for follicles and also had anti-inflammatory effect um, so at some point, uh, three years ago, we did first research, research with Kerastan Company. We were one of four sites. They were the first one who conducted the study for stem cells, adipose-derived stem cells for androgenic alopecia. And uh, I just re I, I presented results um, uh, today, uh, and we got um, good results from enriched fat and fat only, which sort of... Uh, is something I, I intuitively knew that is going to happen. Um, now we are conducting a study. Um, we want to see how fat works in comparison to fat in combination with PRP and PRP alone. So basically we are comparing three regenerative therapies for androgenic alopecia. Who would be the candidates for this procedure? First of all, a patient who would like to have fat injection has to have extra fat. So very skinny patients are not the candidate. They need to have a little extra fat. Typically, we take it from the abdomen. Uh, we do a liposuction to get the fat out. It's a minor procedure. It's done under local anesthesia, but we take around 50 to 80 cc of fat. Once that fat is out, uh, we purify it. We use one device, it's called PureGraft. So we purify fat from contaminants such as white blood cells, lipids, oils. So we get purified fat and then we inject it into the scalp. If you ask me who the candidates, ha candidates would be, we do treat patients with androgenic alopecia, frontal fibrosing alopecia, scarring alopecia. Uh, when it comes to Androgenic alopecia, for sure, I would, I would advise patients in earlier stages of hair loss because we cannot, uh, if hair is completely lost, there is no effect of fat. However, if there is some fat, some hair that is thinning, that's where fat can play a role and thicken the hairs and, and, and induce uh, more hair growth. So early stages of hair loss and of course women uh, many women with androgenic alopecia are great candidates for this procedure. And of course, women love it because they get a minor liposuction, so they get rid of, the, of that extra fat they might have, and then it, it's injected into the scalp. Um, from my clinical experience, I've seen this um, therapy uh, being effective for a year, 
to year and a half, sometimes even two years. So that's one injection. It's not something that is monthly done. That's why it's so convenient for patients. They have, that ha they have it done once and then there is a prolonged effect of the therapy.